Net neutrality is back. Nintendo comes for Gary's mod and Qualcomm's lying about their Snapdragon chips. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, April 26, 2024. And today, as we're filming, happens to be Take Your Child to Work Day. So here's my oldest. Isaac. You're gonna leave my, <laughs> you're leaving me hanging like that. It also happens to be your birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. Mm. 13 years young, I have a teenager. This is uh, exciting stuff. You ready to get into the hot news? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about something that happened right around the time you were born, which is net neutrality rules that came into effect thanks to the Obama administration here in the US, but then was repealed under the subsequent administration and now is finally back under the administration that came after that one. Net neutrality getting re restored by the FCC, making it so that ISPs cannot block or prioritize certain content or zero rate certain data or throttle access to specific sites, etc. Things that you heard back when net neutrality was getting banned would absolutely decimate the industry of the internet if this was allowed to be repealed. It hasn't quite been that way. I did a little bit of digging into exactly why the lack of net neutrality has not decimated the internet, and it simply has to do with a lot of different states taking up their own laws. Additionally, uh, it's, it's not necessarily the fact that ISPs aren't doing this. It's actually when this got repealed, it took away the FCC's ability to even monitor whether or not it's happening. So the FCC actually has a little bit more authority now, at least here in the US, to evaluate is the internet being controlled more equally and the reapplication of net neutrality will allow them to investigate various different claims, especially if you feel like your ISP has been throttling certain parts of your internet that you don't think that they should. The FCC is now in control of that once again. But while a lot of people support net neutrality, they also support right to repair. And today's video sponsor is gonna help you actually repair your device. Today's video is sponsored by Fantic and their E1 Next workstation. This nifty little portable workstation is a one-stop shop for anything you you can need to work on electronics of all sizes. You open up the case and you first see the soft magnetic work mat outfitted with a grid, rulers, and other useful markings. Cracking into the case, you'll be greeted with a whopping 64 precision drill bits constructed from S2 stainless steel. Each bit is nickel plated, aiding in oxidation and corrosion resistance, resulting in durable and reliable bits. Checking out the other half of the case, Fantic includes 12 various tools invaluable for working on comic electronics, multiple tweezers for those spaces your fingers just can't reach, or various plastic pry bars for separating those annoying plastic seams. And probably best of all, in the hinge of the case, Fantec sneaks a whole electric screwdriver. The driver itself is rechargeable via the included USB-C cable and comes with an adjustable knob on top to control the torque level or lock it up for storage. The handle of the driver features easy to use arrow buttons directing which way the screw will be moved. Additionally, you'll always see where you're working thanks to the ring light at the end of the driver. I quickly disassembled the small keyboard in the office office with this kit and I was able to take it completely apart in just over a minute and then reassemble it just as quickly. And all closed up and full of all the tools, the entire kit is about the size of a notebook and weighs only a few pounds so both storage and travel are made easy. If you're looking for a better way to dig into your busted electronics, grab Fantix's new E1 Next workstation for yourself via the link in the description below. Big thank you to Fantix for sponsoring today's video. But while Fantix can help you repair your devices, I don't think there's anything that can help me repair my relationship with Nintendo and it also appears that a lot of people who have developed Gary's Mod mods over the years now have a strained relationship with Nintendo. Can you, would you mind just saying the catchphrase of the, the channel with me? Freak, Freak Nintendo. Nintendo. Turns out that Nintendo filed a ton of DMCA claims against Gary Mod Workshop creators who have made various different things related to the company and their IPs. At first, it wasn't quite clear if it was Nintendo doing it. There was a little PSA saying that there's some false flags going on where somebody's doing it on behalf of Nintendo. However, the Gary, Behind Gary's mod, Gary Newman came out and said that this appears to be legitimate. They were made by Nintendo. And so the takedown of all of these different mods and workshop items is fair. It's Nintendo's content. They can decide where it goes up and where it does not. And it happens to be that Gary's mod cannot be one of those places that has that. This is just another step in Nintendo showing their fans that they do not appreciate them. They do not like it. When you enjoy their content in a way that's good for you, you have to enjoy it the way 
way Nintendo determines you want to. I don't like them very much for that reason. And also it turns out a lot of people didn't like the MSI Claw. I had, did not get my hands on one, haven't had the ability to review one, but I saw that it was poorly reviewed. But one of the things that's true about Intel's GPUs is that their driver support continues to increase their performance and the MSI Claw just finally got a BIOS update that's supposed to increase its performance in a various different games, up to 44% increase in a whole lot of titles, including F123, Hogwarts Legacy, Diablo 4, Forza Horizon 5, Dead Space, Helldivers 2, and Hogwarts Legacy all getting increases in their FPS thanks to this latest BIOS update. Let me know if you've picked up an MSI Claw, have you been enjoying it? Do you Have, have you played on a gaming handheld very much? No, no, just on a PC? Yeah. Do you want one? No. Oh, because you could just play on your PC? Yeah. Let me know what you think of the MSI Claw down below, while Reese lets you know about the deals. Can you pull Reese down? Like, yeah. Tell... Yeah, just grab him. He's right there. Okay. You can get him. You got him. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well and happy Friday, unless you hate Fridays, but there's definitely something I don't hate. It's cheap mechanical keyboards with no visible logos that I can mod to heck and back. And this IROC FE87 hard swappable mechanical keyboard with red switches for now is only $16.99, making it $17 off. Go wild. But then next up, we have the Sparkle Intel Arc A380 Elf graphics card for only $99.99, .99, making it $40 off and a great little AV1 upgrade to any media PC. And then lastly, we have this KTC 27 inch 1440p 240 hertz OLED gaming monitor for only $639.99 with the coupon applied, making it $160 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, here's the deal. You better be coming to Computex with me. This guy won't tell me whether or not he's actually gonna show up. And now we have reports about what NVIDIA is gonna be doing for Computex, which is that they're skipping it all together and they're doing a keynote right before the event. June 2nd is when Jensen's gonna give a keynote about the AI era and how it's driving a new industrial revolution across the globe. So likely nothing to do with the gaming GPUs. Those are likely still gonna be happening, probably more towards Gamescom towards the end of Q3 if not early Q4, so don't expect much in the gaming realm, but AMD's keynote is the day after on June 3rd, followed by Qualcomm later that day. Intel is giving their keynote the following day on June 4th, and then there's a few others, but it looks like Nvidia wants to jump the gun and get the heck out of there, and so that's what they're doing. This is why I leave, I go to Taiwan for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but one of the things we are expecting AMD to announce at Computex is their next-gen Ryzen 9000 CPUs. And a whole lot of motherboard companies just announced that their AM5 motherboards can support it. Biostar got it. ASRock got it. They all have it. Asus and MSI and Gigabyte have already all said that they are going to be able to support Ryzen 9000. So this is just hot and heavy. I, I would not be shocked if it was announced before Computex because of how much support is being shown on the software and driver side for it, but uh, it likely will still be that June 3rd day. But one of the things that Qualcomm announced yesterday is their Snapdragon X Plus platform. This is going to be a step down from the Snapdragon X Elite that's supposed to be coming out to PCs later this year, and it's supposed to compete with Apple in terms of its ARM functionality on Windows, which all seems well and good. It's built for AI, gets 45 tops, equivalent to what Intel has said Lunar Lake is gonna be able to do when it comes to the NPU that's on this chip. And and that it matches peak PC performance at 54% less power consumption. It has 3.8 teraflops of GPU performance, can compete with the best that's out there from AMD and Intel in the integrated GPU department, and it's the world's fastest MPU for laptops, despite the fact that it's not launching till later this year, and Intel has already said Lunar Lake is gonna match it. Who cares about that kind of stuff? So this all seems very exciting. Qualcomm introducing a new CPU. Intel and AMD might wanna start shaking in their boots. X86 is dead. Except for there's industry reports coming out that maybe Qualcomm is fudging the numbers a little bit. According to Semi Accurate, Qualcomm might be cheating on their Snapdragon X Elite and Pro benchmarks. They are not disclosing the technical details of this very well. They say 3.8 teraflops, but no specs, no capabilities, no benchmarks, nothing like that. Additionally, not giving a ton of technical details, so they appear to be withholding a lot of information about the platform. Additionally, Semi Accurate says that they talked to various OE 
OEMs with these chips and that they're not confident that they're actually gonna be able to meet the performance Qualcomm is putting out there. In fact, it's so bad that they are sub 50% the numbers that Qualcomm is touting in their open benchmarks. OEMs have not been able to replicate the performance Qualcomm is saying they should expect based on everything that's happening. Qualcomm saying that it's not due to a defect in the chips, but it does seem like it could potentially be tied to the fact that Windows does not run well on ARM, and that's where the hiccup's coming from, with one OEM specifically saying that the performance is Celeron-like, which is not a good phrase you want to hear in 2024. So it, it appears that Qualcomm might have some answering to do when it comes to how their chips perform. This likely will be very easily discovered when third-party reviews come out, which is obviously the advice being given. This is a brand new type of chip being released for various different laptops. Make sure you verify your reviews before you just trust a company like Qualcomm. However, they have come out and said to Tom's Hardware, we stand behind our performance claims and are excited for consumers to get their hands on Snapdragon X Elite and X Plus devices soon. So not really refuting anything that Semi-Accurate is bringing up, but simply saying that they stand behind their numbers. I think third-party reviews is gonna solve all of this. We can see whether or not Qualcomm's been fudging their estimates. And if they are, this shows that Windows might not be ready to compete with Mac OS when it comes to having chips ready for their ARM side of things. But you know what I'm ready for? comment response. We're going to read comments from yesterday's episode of Hot News, as well as a video that's over on Float Plane that you YouTube people will get to see later this weekend. And that's my 4060 versus 7600 video. We got a little Nikki Scarfo saying, well said, Brett, like these types of videos. Thanks, Fred. I like I like making them. We have made too few of them, and I would like to continue to increase the amount of non-hot news videos that we release here on UFT Tech. And Kyler's got one that's releasing this weekend on YouTube. Uh, it should be up on Float Plane hopefully by now, if not a little later today. And then for yesterday's episode of Hot News over on Flow Plane, we got NRP saying, I haven't given up on Newegg. Micro Center is only two hours away, not too far. That's doable to me. Micro Center being two hours away, that's like, that's a four hour round trip. That's half of your day just completely wasted on uh, on traveling. I, you can do it every once in a while, but buying all your tech parts all the time, hmm. If you're only building a PC once every five to seven years, then it's, it's totally fine. Then Kryptonite says, at the end, we got bought out. I would love to see you bring your chaotic neutral host. I think he did a great job adding humor to your segment. He's good in small doses. What do you, what do you think about Kyler now that you've been working with him today? He's exciting. He's exciting. Oh, that's high praise. <laughs> Over on YouTube, a non-287 saying, the more I see of Windows 11, the more I'm convinced that Microsoft is willingly following the OS trend that they've had for nearly three decades now. Windows 95 was bad stability-wise, Windows 98 was good, Windows ME was bad. How dare you, Millennium Edition was fantastic. Windows XP was good, Windows Vista was bad, 7 was good, 8 was bad, 10 was good-ish, and Windows 11 is just getting worse with every new development. I don't know if Windows 11's all that bad. Are they making some missteps? Sure, but I don't think Windows 11 is comparable to 8 or Vista in terms of degradation from what 10 had. I don't know. And then Jeremy saying, Brett, you need to install a Kyler camera. I have to know what's going on over there from time to time. You just need to come watch our Twitch stream because Kyler is acting a fool over on Twitch all of the time. We literally have a camera. I mean, he's just in his natural element. I don't know what he's doing. I don't have the audio on. I don't know what he's saying to you or what he's saying to chat, but you guys can, uh, you want the Kyler camera, you head on over to twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. And in fact, we're actually gonna be building PC over on Twitch today and we're gonna be giving away a PC on Twitch today. We're gonna be giving this PC away. It's got a Ryzen 5 7600 and an RTX 4060. It's actually featured in the video that's going live this weekend and we're, we're giving it away today. Thank you. And then we got Joanne saying, thanks for keeping us updated. I feel sympathy and empathy for our country. Low income people are suffering to survive and I appreciate Deborah. You've helped my family with your advice. Imagine investing $30,000 and receiving $95,460 after 28 days of trading. What What is with these bots, man? They just keep populating. We had the one from Binance a couple days ago. The uh, the booty cheek spots are all over the place. It's It's been wild. Like this got a ton of likes and replies in a very short time frame. Uh, a bunch of nonsense. Do not engage with these. Do not reply to these. Uh, also, how are you suffering to survive? But you got $30,000 to invest? Wow. 
Good for you. We have different definitions of struggling to survive. Then we got Z Shrink saying, hey Reese, I'm just saying, if you need a spot in the US, but you don't feel like you want to be in Pennsylvania, Indiana has a few spaces available. And then we got Kevin Brewer saying, Brett, ETA Prime has a video guide showing how one can enable AMD fluid motion frames on any of the 7840U and 7640U, Z1E and Z1 based handhelds. It is really easy and has greatly improved the performance of my ROG ally. Perhaps you might want to do a video on this? Question mark. I would watch it. ETA Prime already made the video. I got to meet him at CES. Lovely dude. Uh, fantastic. I can't say enough good things about him just as a person, but then also his content is phenomenal. But like you're asking me to do a video that he already did and he's world class. He's top of the game, I, like I would just do it worse. So uh, if you want that type of video, ETA Prime's your person. I would just make the same video, but slightly less good. And what is less good is hot news on the weekend, which is why it doesn't exist. We don't give it to you. So we're uh, we're gonna leave. We're gonna go celebrate your birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. Thanks, Thanks for coming to work today. And uh, we'll catch you back here on Monday for more of the hottest tech news. And also don't forget about all the videos come going live on YouTube this weekend and on Floatplay.